In this episode of Thousand Dollar Car Guy, we're going to shorten the tongue on this little trailer that I bought. As you can see, there is a huge chasm of distance in between, so let's try and fix that. Now, I haven't done this yet, so we're either going to get hilarious results, or maybe we'll all learn something. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove all the wiring accessories. So I've got a couple of zip ties holding the harness up, so we'll get rid of them. And then I've got a tech screw down here for the ground lug. We'll go ahead and take that back out. So hopefully now our wiring harness should be basically free. And as you can see, it runs inside the tongue. So we want to be very careful about not pinching any of those wires while we continue. I think it's time to decouple the car now. So there's a whole bunch of extra harness wiring here. Uh, it was all kind of bunched up and taped up like that, but I'm just going to put some tape around the ground lug. So now it's all kind of like one long snake because I need to fish it back through the channel. I don't want anything to catch on anything else while it's inside there because it's gonna be real hard to get out. Okay. The next thing I need to figure out is how much I'm going to take out of the front tongue channel. So the galvanized part that's sticking out here slides inside this whole tube. And I'm not sure how far back it goes, but all I need to know is how much of a gap I'm going to be cutting off. Give myself a little bit of wiggle room. It looks like I should cut around 27 inches. Next up, we have to remove the channel. So we're going to start by taking these two bolts out. I'm not sure what size they are. And then we are going to see if this assembly will pull out from in there. We may need to do some bracing on the trailer. Let's go ahead and remove these two bolts. Looks like we're out of power. Well, I guess we're using hand tools. Next, we're going to lift the jack all the way up so that we can take these mounting tabs off of it because this new spot is going to be on the other side of where the bolts were. Similar process, we're just gonna take the bolts and nuts out. Now this next part is the unknown. I'm hoping that this is just a slip joint so that I can just slide the whole thing back out, but I don't know, and it looks like this trailer may have been in a couple accidents in its past, so fingers crossed it comes out. Working. It's working. It's working. All right, let's check back in when it's all out. We got our channel out, but our wiring harness is still inside, so I gotta feed that through without destroying it. The next thing I'm gonna do is measure 27 inches, which is about there. Scribe a line, it's good enough. And now we get to cut it. I'm going to be using a grinder with a cutoff wheel. I'm also going to be wearing a pair of safety glasses. So take your time. Um, there's a lot of ways you could do this. You could use a sawzall if you had one. You could also use a horizontal bandsaw if you had one. I mean, really anything that can cut metal, use whatever you feel comfortable with. I think the grinder with the cutoff wheel is going to be my fastest route. So that's the way we're gonna do it. Cue the montage. And there you have it, an almost straight line. Woo! So now I'm going to try and fish the harness connector through the new cutoff piece. It's probably not going to work too well. So if this doesn't work, I'm going to end up taking a piece of copper wire, fishing it through this way, tying it off and pulling it through. But I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. Yeah, because there's some big through bolts going all the way through here. So I don't know. We'd have to time it just right. I'll mess around with it for a little bit, then I'll get back to you. So literally two seconds later, all I did was tilt it up like this and let the connector fall out using gravity. So that was super easy. We got our ground wire back through, so I guess. Now's the time to see if this bad boy still fits in here. It should. Um, what I am gonna keep doing though is pulling the harness through as I go because I don't want it to pinch inside here. That's a tight fit. But 
I guess better to have a tight fit than a loose fit. Alrighty, let's get this all the way in. I don't think that's all the way in. My math shouldn't be that wrong. Let's get the sledge. There we go. Now we're in. Okay, let's re-drill the holes. I'm gonna start with a smaller drill bit than what I need to go all the way through. Uh, this should give me a nice pilot hole for the other ones to follow. Also, if I'm making a little mark, I'll notice if the inner piece is moving forward or back. We wouldn't want this to move on us after we drill one hole because then the other hole might be off and the bolt might not go through. Here we go. I have the world's dullest bits. So got me holes drilled. Now it's time to try and fish this hardware through. See how good we lined it up. That's a good sign. Hopefully the other one's just as good. Fits like a glove. Don't wear a lot of gloves in Florida. All right, let's go ahead and get these nuts tightened up and move on to the next step. Let's go ahead and bolt the tongue jack to its new location. Eh, somewhere kind of around there. All we want to do is make sure that we have good handle clearance so you're not hitting the side of this thing or the side of the bumper once it's connected. So I've settled with this spot. Uh, not only Clears my chains and I'll be able to run my new ground lug back here. But I also don't hit anything with my elbow when I go up. Now we can take out our bucket jack stands and move on to wiring. So obviously this is too much wire to keep here. So what I need to do is cut it somewhere and splice it all back together so it's nice and short but I wanna make sure that my trailer lights all still work because we were pounding on the inside of this thing and I wanna make sure I haven't pinched any wires. So I'm gonna back the car up and see if all the trailer lights still work. Did it work? So now that we know that our wiring will work, it's time to make it actually work. That was just a temporary ground. So inside we have ground, power, brake lights, turn signals, all that good stuff. What I wanted to do was leave this hooked up so I know how long I need to make everything. So it honestly looks like we could cut most of this back to about right here and get rid of all this because this trailer is only going to be for my application unless it comes into the possession of somebody else in which it's their problem at that point. Um, but because of this high rise hitch ball assembly, I wanted to make sure that we had enough cable left. So I'm going to clip it off, uh, strip back the wire sheathing, solder them, shrink tube them, and tape them to make sure that we have a really good connection. And I need to leave a little bit of extra wire so that I can mount my ground lug back here somewhere safe. Also, my chains aren't long enough anymore. They weren't apparently long enough before either, but this used to be a lot shorter and they used to fit. So. I guess we need some more chain links. The first thing I did was electrical tape off a section of the harness coming out of the trailer. So as you can see I've got a little bit of wiggle room that goes inside the trailer and goes back so there's no strain on that. And then I zip tied it in two places. So next we're going to find a suitable spot, clip it here, and then clip it further down the line. Here you can see I've soldered all my wires together at their new cut lengths. Next, I'm going to shrink tube them and crimp a ground lug onto the white ground wire. Nice heat gun. Now that our ground lug is secure, we can go ahead and electrical tape all of our connections shut. Everything's all hooked up. Our completed assembly. I hope you found some of this video entertaining or informative. If you did, please give it a like. That really helps me out. Thanks for watching this episode of $1,000 Car Guy. I hope to see you on a future one. All right, happy trailering.